The Psychedelic Science in the 21st Century Conference met in San Jose in April 2010. It was sponsored by MAPS, Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Studies. It was the biggest and most significant U.S. convention on the topic of medical psychedelic research in 17 years, drawing presenters from around the world, such as Stan Groff, Ralph Metzner, Charles Grob, and Benny Shannon. For those of us who have benefited from the wise use of psychedelics, it was a kind of homecoming, a chance to connect with friends we have not yet met. This program focuses on the visionary and psychedelic art, which was featured at the conference, and on the artists who shared their vision. I'm Kirby Seed, and one of the co-founders with Randall Fonts of the Ancient Technologies Company. And uh, we do several things here. Is One is we um, sell crystals, fossils, mineral specimens, artifacts. Lots of different shamans, healers, and teachers come to us. And they give us designs or they bring artifacts and we, we replicate them uh, uh, for their students and their, um, their apprentices. That's one of the things that we do. Um, I'm also involved in developing technology with my partner Randall, who is uh, from the Exploratorium in San Francisco, as well as Darren Gibbs from Apple Computer. And um, we, create, we create light compositions. And these very complex light compositions are computer programmed. And, we, and the object that we're lighting are either large quartz crystals or two-dimensional art. And, this, and in this case of the two-dimensional art piece, this is a gosset polytope. It's an eight-dimensional object. It's a two-dimensional representation of an eight-dimensional object along with a fractal pattern. And we project these light compositions onto this two-dimensional art piece. And it illuminates the, the, um, the interaction between the reflect, ref, reflected light and the uh, projected light to create this um, interesting um, composition. Uh, it allows people to go in very deep, deep trance states, stand, trance states very quickly. Um, there is a sense in which some of the lighting effects are programmed with brainwave uh, effects. So for example, when you're looking at this, you go into an alpha state or a theta state, and that um, as you're observing the art piece, you're going into an altered state, accessing more of your subconscious and unconscious resources as a way of viewing and interpreting the, the art. Hello, I'm Jennifer Ingram, and I'm with the Tribe 13 Art Collective, currently out of Ukiah, California. And today we are at the MAPS conference, and I'm here to introduce some of the artwork that we represent. And this artist right here is Luke Brown, and he is a Canadian-based artist, currently living in Bali. And he is a digital master, as, long, as well as a um, oil painter. And this is Tetra Matrix. And up here above is Martina Hoffman, and the piece is called Caught in the Web. And I believe that this painting was uh, after a very long journey with um, ayahuasca. She, uh, during her um, journey, she saw some of these different creatures, and it symbolizes that by letting it all go during her journey. And below is Robert Venosa, and the piece is called Hallucinogenic Self-Portrait. And this is a, it is a print, but he did do a, um, a painting upon the top of it. And it's a pretty intense piece, um, but it definitely describes what he was feeling during whatever experience he was having at the time. 
My name is Matthew Poplowski. I'm a visual oil painter uh, with the, collect the artist collective Tribe 13. And this is my most recent piece. It's called Looking Glass Triptych. It's oil on canvas. And um, essentially, it's just, for me, just an exploration of luminosity, the play of light, and glass-like forms. Why did you give it this particular title? For me, I came up with the idea of looking glass um, because here you have several kind of uh, transparent, translucent, jewel-like windows that are essentially a uh, looking glass into uh, a scene of the cosmos and also just uh, see the kind of the re uh, reflection, the play of light amongst the forms. And to me, that was reminiscent of a looking glass. And this artist is Autumn Sky Morrison. And this piece, um, The Return, is one of my most favorite pieces that we have in our gallery at the moment. Uh, just what it's depicting, the, just that the um, feet are walking into a totally different reality, and I'm not sure where they're going. And the little fireflies, and the makeup of the the bones softly within her within her um, legs and buttocks. And this is Adam Scott Miller, and he is uh, a newer visionary artist on the team, and he's a young genius from Pennsylvania. And this is Adam Scott Miller, and it's the piece is named Antenna. It's an oil painting, and it's a self-portrait of himself. And the one next to it, uh, up there? Up there, that's called Acoustic. And it's also an original oil painting as well. And over here we have Android Jones, or Andrew Jones, Dr. Jones. And he is a, a personal favorite of mine. Um, he's local from San Francisco, really Berkeley. He is a digital master who uh, performs all over the world on a Wacom tablet. And he creates uh, basically paintings while he's with his tablet, projecting it upon his wife um, everywhere. And he will be performing actually this evening here at the conference. Hello, my name is Amanda Sage. I'm a visionary artist. And I'm here at the MAPS conference in San Jose to show my work and to meet with many other like-minded souls from this planet. There's people from all over the world here. Um, this current painting that I have next to me is one of my more recent works that I did in 2010. It is titled Sharing Rays. And it's a painting that was inspired by a very dear friend of mine, this woman Sherry Ray, who was building Peace, which is in downtown LA. It's also very near a great gallery that we just founded titled Temple of Visions, one of the largest visionary galleries in the world now. And this painting I started live, I started painting it live, I'm doing a lot more performance painting. It's a very in thing uh, over here on the west coast and it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. It's inspirational uh, kundalini energy uh, awakening broadening of consciousness. So this painting is titled Gateway to the Emerald Kingdom and I painted it in light of, of the plant life, of um, nature and the return of it to our cities also and also to building more and more temples, places of, of worship, of creation in a new way, in an all-encompassing way. And yeah. <laughs> it speaks for itself, the, the microcosm and the macrocosm coming together.
Ora ya mo ya mo i ni, trai na na i na na i na i ni, trai na na i na na i na i ni. Me dice na ro na si, da ra 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 ri. Tre na ri ri ra ra ra, trai na na i na na i na i ni, trai na na i na na i na i ni. Linda dir que si ta i ni, se la la go na i ni ma. Ora ya mo ya mo i ni, na i na na i na na i na i ni. Me dice na ro na si, da ra 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 ra. Para todos tus hijos aquí en la tierra y mí. Que haya ri 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 ri, que na ri 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 ri. Me dice na ora ya, ora ya, ya muy mi, na 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 mi. Ri 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 ri, ri 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 ri. Ri 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 ri. My name is Mark Henson, and this is one of my paintings. This is called Leap of Faith. And in this piece, I was trying to evoke the uh, sum total of our life experience. And so here we have uh, life entering into the world, and the things we might experience through our lifetime, and then the uh, soul emanating up into the cosmos again. On this side, I have the things of life that are growth-oriented, uh, fecund, where things are growing and sprouting, and, and the green side of life. And on this side here, I have the decay process, uh, decay and death, and the breaking down of life forms into their elemental components. And I visualize this as uh, that, that life itself is the greatest of all psychological and psychedelic experiences, and that the uh, greatest hallucinogen of all is oxygen. And so this picture I was trying to, to kind of sum up a life experience of, of the coming and going of life as if an inhalation and exhalation of the breath. That we come in and then we go out. One of my ways of getting my imagery out into the general world and sharing it with everybody is to put my things on clothing. So I made a, a, a business agreement with the Crystal Tara Company of Santa Cruz, and uh, between us we collaborate to create lovely items of clothing for both men and women that feature my designs, and uh, so that these are of what we call art wear. So this is art you can wear anywhere you go. I'll let you keep it here until Sunday when I go home. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Para todos tus hijos aquí en la tierra y mí. Que haya ri 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 ri, que na ri 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 ri. Me dice na ora ya, ora ya, ya muy mí. Na 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 mí. Ri 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 ri. Ri 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 ri. Con tus bendiciones y mi, ora ya mo ya mo y mi. Ray na na y na na y na na y, ray ra 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 Ray 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 ray
Hi, I'm 99 from the 99 High Art Collective, and these are paintings from Pablo Amaringo. They're his last earthly paintings. We, um, we were fortunate enough to be able to have them in our gallery in Venice Beach shortly before he passed away while we were trying to get his visas in order to try and bring him to his opening, his first North American opening ever. Um, he, he grew ill and uh, passed away before, um, before the exhibit um, opened, or actually a week after. He grew sick a week before we opened, so I kind of like to say that he got to the exhibit quicker than if we had flown him there. Um, we certainly felt his spirit um, and being amongst his paintings for uh, the time that we had his exhibit was very, very special. Um, for people who come into the gallery and don't know anything about Pablo Amaringo, I always let them know that he was a revered shaman from the Peruvian rainforest and a visionary artist. And these paintings were his ayahuasca visions. As a shaman, he was a healer for many, many years before he uh, dedicated himself to visionary art. And these are his visions um, from dr drinking the ayahuasca brew and they all represent healing, um, learning how to heal oneself, learning how to heal others, uh, and, um, and just the magic that, um, that exists within us all and the universe around us. So, um, so these are his paintings. Uh, they were all done in, um, in Peru. What can I tell you about it? I mean, there are a lot of uh, psychedelic scholars that could tell you a lot more than I can. However, I can tell you that just being around them and just seeing how people react to, to his paintings is uh, it's, uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> Linda Linda Para todos tus hijos aquí en la tierra y mí. Con tus bendiciones y ora ya muy muy ni. Con tu manto y podero, podero si tai ni man. 
Ora ya mo ya mo ini, say na 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 ini, linda kerja kita ini, bela lagu na ini na. Say ra 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 ra, say ra 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 ra, say ra 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 ra. Kanto man say potero, potero si say ni na. Ora ya mo ya mo ini, say na na. Nai nai ni linda kir kita ini bela lagu nai ni na. Rai 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 I'm here with filmmaker Richard Meech, and Richard has produced a film, Vine of the Soul, Encounters with Ayahuasca. Richard, what motivated you to uh, make this film? I guess you'd have to say that my, my interest in this has, has been one that I, has been a sustained interest of mine for many years, which is the use of sacred plants by human societies throughout time. I've always been interested in the indigenous use of plants in terms of their technology of the sacred how plants are used for self-healing, for mystical experiences, and for spiritual awakening. And I'd often wondered why there was no way that Western people, non-indigenous people, could have access to the same technology of the sacred in a way that was beyond pure curiosity or recreational use. And what I noticed in the last several years is that ayahuasca the sacred technology, the sacred medicine of many peoples in South America has become newly rediscovered by Western people, people from North America, people from Europe. And they're looking to drink ayahuasca in a traditional context, traditional Amazonian medicine, for their own self-healing and their own spiritual awakening. And I thought, as this movement is growing, and as ayahuasca itself leaves the Amazon, this is a very important subject for our contemporary culture, to understand why people are searching for ayahuasca, why they're drinking it, and what experiences they have, how it transforms them. So in this film, we follow a number of different people and their encounters with ayahuasca. We film it in Peru and, we've, and back in Canada. So we follow the journeys of people from their hometowns in Canada, where they have not taken ayahuasca, to Peru and back to the modern world. Filming ceremonies, in fact, in Canada, as well as Peru. And the film includes the context from different experts, Dennis McKenna, who's a world-renowned ethnopharmacologist, Gabor Mate, who's a world leader in addiction treatment, who's now using ayahuasca to help people afflicted by serious addictions, and Ken Tupper, a scholar who writes on the globalization of ayahuasca and the issues that that raises for local authorities. We live in a culture that's spiritually very deprived, that's very material based. In other words, we live in a culture that does not give human beings what they really need. That leaves a huge hole in people. The notion that there is a spiritual component to healing has been totally excised from biomedicine. Spirituality and healing? What does spirituality have to do with healing? So we're all going to be drinking ayahuasca tonight. Trust yourself. You've heard the call. you felt the call to be here. It's a tea. It's always made from two plants, one of which contains the hallucinogen, dimethyltryptamine, or DMT. DMT is what I call a true psychedelic. Some people talk about a chemical. It's not a chemical. Ayahuasca is a spirit. The wisdom 
of learning through plants is a, is a cultural tradition that goes back hundreds if not thousands of years. It's gotten me in touch with my spirit, which I had like no concept of before. It's opened my heart in a way that I never had it open before, ever. Most religions make a great deal about how you must have faith. What's interesting about ayahuasca is you don't have to have faith. Don't believe me, don't believe what anybody tells you. Take it, have the experience, evaluate it for yourself. I'm not going through this life and not doing ayahuasca. There is no way. If that isn't the most humbling thing I've ever done, I don't yet know what it means. So approach ayahuasca with, you know, obviously respect, with reverence, and also with gratitude. One of, the, one of the most important things about ayahuasca that I have experienced and that I have found in my conversations with other people is that at the most profound level of the healing that ayahuasca gives you or the spiritual awakening that it provides is that it takes you into, it takes you into a, a zone in your, in your own experience, in your own mind to experience a kind of love that you may never have experienced in your life. So I just wanted to, to offer that, that insight that um, on the deepest spiritual level that ayahuasca and other substances, other plant, sacred, sacred plant substances can provide people is an access to some of the most profound parts of one's sacred experiences, which is ultimately an experience of love. And by that, I mean the love that in some ways you might say is not from here. It's the love that permeates the continuum. And people feel uh, an aspect of that in themselves, and they feel a connection to that, that they may never have experienced in other ways. So it's important for people to, to understand that at the basis of this sacred technology that ayahuasca is, is a way of reconnecting to yourself, to the planet, to the cosmos, and the energy that underlies all of it.